If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, Transformational Shaman. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Catherine Loringer. And what are we calling you, a transformational coach? Is that sure. the title? Sure. Okay. It's the, the name du jour, title du jour. Sure, why not? Yeah. yeah. And so today, we're going to talk about how you are a limiting factor in your business. And so, you know, we're, we're going to hop right into this topic because I feel like this one's going to be a big one. So, Catherine, I'm going to let you go ahead and start uh, with your thoughts on this, and then I'll, I'll come in and weave mine back in. Oh, you know, Kelly, I, one of the things about me is I have a background in counseling. I should have a master's in counseling. That was kind of my first, um, first career area, I guess. And I've always been drawn to personal growth and transformation and had done crap tons of work in that area. And it wasn't until I actually had a business where I realized that there was this whole other level of growth available to me and this whole other level of um, limitation where my own fears would get in the way, my own procrastination, perfectionism, like so many of these things where the growth in my business was actually limited by me. And so what I've come to discover in working with hundreds of entrepreneurs is that we're the ones that get in our own way, right? Our fear of looking ridiculous or it not being perfect or feeling like it's got to be all figured out before we get going. This idea that everybody else knows what they're doing, but we're the only ones who actually don't. And I have a, a story I'll share on a later podcast where I realized that that was actually just a load of crap. And so, so often we're the ones that get in the way of our own business result or growth because of our, our fear, our perfectionism, could be fear of failure, fear of success, could be fear of looking like a fool, could be not being prepared, not being willing to take risks, all of those being things. Being unwilling to be seen. Yes, being unwilling to be seen. Yeah. And so, so as we bump up against the edges of our own growth, that's where we start to to really step outside the comfort going zone and get a different kind of results. So uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. Yeah, so I will tell you that this has been the biggest stumbling block for me in my business uh, mm -hmm. over the years. And I, I've always told people, I'm like, if you want to really grow as a person, go into business or get into our relationship because those two mm -hmm. things will force you to get mm -hmm. your crap together, right? Mm -hmm. And so for me, I had this, uh, you know, it, it's so interesting because 25 years ago, probably a little more than that, actually, a friend had done a reading for me and she said, there is this huge river of success waiting for you, but there's this massive boulder in the way of the river. And she said, you need to move that boulder. But she couldn't tell me what the boulder was. She just, she just I, my energy was not giving her permission. And it took me all of this time to figure out what that was. And it was a fear of fame. And that's what it was for me, is this fear of fame that was holding on. And, uh, you know, there was an interesting sort of thing going on in my energy field because uh, as I started working on this, because I, I did start working on this about a year ago now, as I started working on it, my uh, there was this this big fear came up and I'm like, what is this problem? What is this? I was only focusing on the, the bad side of fame, you know, the, oh my God, am I going to be able to go out and in public and am I going to be able to, because freedom is like my highest value, right? So if I, is my freedom going to be restricted and all the stuff and just and the, the thing that happened that was interesting is that mm. I had a reading well, years before that that was like, look, nothing bad ever happens to you. That's a karmic guarantee in this life because of a past life that you had where you were a really awesome person. And so you're, you've got all this good karma coming into this life. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. 
And yet somehow, even though I knew that, and that has been my lived experience this life is and not that nothing bad ever happens, but nothing horrific ever happens, right? You know, there are situations I've been in where things should have gone horribly wrong and they didn't, right? Uh, and so what I discovered was there was a, a whole set of guides that I had not been talking to uh, that were only here to make sure I did not get in trouble, that I didn't have a bad experience. And they were freaked out about the whole fame thing. And they were the ones causing the panic and the upset and the whatever and whatever. And I'm just like, okay, look, I'm not attached to this karma. You know, I, I'm not that I want bad things to happen. I don't, but I, I know that my mission here requires that I be visible. Right. And it requires that I, I be out in the world. And so if, if that is the case, then, you know, if I have to choose between the nothing bad ever happens or the, the, you know, fulfilling my mission, I'm going to fulfill my mission because that's just who I am. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm adaptable and flexible. And if something bad happens, I'll, I'll survive, right. I'll, I'll recover. So I had to have this conversation with these guides and say, look, you know, this is, this is a thing. And so what we did was we sat down and we looked at the timelines and we picked a very specific timeline in which, you know, I could thread the needle and not have something bad happen. And so they would allow me to have this visibility, which would then allow me to fulfill my mission. And so, um, you know, I didn't have to choose, but I did have to like pick the timeline that was going to work before they would let it go. And what has happened, interestingly, is that, you know, I've been working, I've been on social media, I've been on Facebook since then and YouTube since 2007 when they launched, right? Been on both of these for freaking ever, right? And yeah, I've got a fair number of followers and, and that's fine. But my, my views on my TikToks and my YouTube and my Facebook and my everything is the, the, you know, the podcast is all just like exploding now that I've let go of that fear of fame. And I, you know, there were a bunch of other things I had to do around it as well, but, but that piece has been the crucial factor for me in terms of getting better known. And so that was a really limiting experience in my business. I also had a lack based mentality for many, many years. I spent way too much time with people who had very little money. And therefore my mindset said, nobody has any money. I can't charge money. I can't make money. I have to live a subsistence life. None of this was entirely conscious. I mean, there was a codependency with my my prospects and my clients around, you know, well, I can't charge them too much and all of that. Uh, but I, I that was a big thing I had to work through as well as, you know, well, just because they need it doesn't mean that I have to be the one to provide it, right? And all of these pieces and parts were were part of it as well. And just this inherent... You know, one of the things that I talk to people about in my Ascend program is I talk to them about uh, the fact that if you aren't marketing to a freak ton of people, if you don't have a, a tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people on your mailing list, you need to be charging larger prices because the people who have tens of thousands of people can afford to charge smaller prices because they get more people buying, right? And so that was a mindset that I had to understand as I was going through this process for myself as well. And so, you know, the the larger your list, the smaller your prices can be. The, the smaller your list, the higher the prices have to be in order to balance that. And so that was another thing that I had to really sort of wrap my head around and be like, okay, I'm not at that stage in my business yet where I can do that level of production and therefore... I have to stay in this market. Plus, with me, I'm a little more intense. <laughs> you know, the work I do with people is is highly touch based. It's highly connected based, and so that lends itself to more of a high ticket dynamic. But back to the topic, because I'm rambling a little bit here. But <laughs> the the idea is that your mindset really determines your outcome in this. Mm -hmm. And where your your mindset is, is where your outcome is going to deliver. I remember going back, I, Kathy and I did a, a, uh, a retreat in like 2013. 
And I was, the retreat was amazing. People came out of it going, oh my God, that was worth $4,000. They had paid 300, 250 bucks for a three day retreat because that's how limited we were in our mindset <laughs> at the time. And, and we had a hard time selling them at $250. And I went back and I looked at the sales page and it was so lack based in its language. The energy was so low. I had, I was stunned that I managed to sell anything. <laughs> So, you know, these are the things that we, we have to pay attention to when we're doing this kind of work. So I'm going to turn that over to you because I've been babbling on forever. So, <laughs> yeah, I want to, I want to talk a little bit more about fear and what's going on with that. And so, you know, I think one of the important things for people to know is that most people are going to experience fear and or have experienced fear. And so fear is not a bad sign. It's not, you know, your guides talking to you. It's not a sign from the universe. It's none of that. All that fear is doing is telling you that you are at the edge of your comfort zone. It's just the edge of your comfort zone. And so whenever you are choosing to step into growing your business, serving your mission, you're going to be required to do different things, to think differently, to show up differently. And so fear is absolutely going to show up with you. And so when fear does show up, just know that it's actually a sign that you're growing, that you're at that that edge of your comfort zone. So it's actually a good sign. So the key there is to to recognize it and to actually be able to befriend it and work with it. And so to look at it, you know, in a slightly different way, so that it's actually, it's a good thing. Yeah. If you're afraid, right, it's a good thing. And so then how do you work with that fear so that you're still taking the steps that you need to take? And then the other thing around mindset, right? Like our mind is so powerful. There is so much information, so many possibilities out there. And our mind is what's going to determine what we see as being available to us. And so, you know, Kelly, you mentioned a scarcity mindset. So if you're focused on so that, why this is going to go wrong or how it's not going to happen or what's the economy doing or what are my competitors doing or how might I fail or how might I look ridiculous, you're going to find evidence. Your mind is actually going to go to work to find evidence to support those beliefs. And so starting to notice what are the underlying thoughts or patterns that I have showing up in, in terms of my business, right? So you want to get curious because those patterns and beliefs are there anywhere and they're running anyway and they're running the show and we're just often we're just not really aware of them. So starting to get really curious and noticing, okay, what am I focusing on? What are the things I'm telling myself? What are the stories that I'm running in my head? What are the, you know, the, 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 the limiting beliefs and a belief is just a thought that you continue to think. What are those things that I'm telling myself that are going to then determine what actions I take and what results that I'm going to achieve. And so when you start to notice them, you want to give yourself a little pat on the head because that's actually a good thing. Lots of times we can beat ourselves up or want to shame ourselves when we notice that we're maybe thinking something that's limiting or not serving what we want to create in the world. So you want to celebrate yourself because it interrupts the pattern. And then you want to insert a new, more empowered belief. Um, yeah. So Kelly, back over to you. Yeah. So, uh, then, and it isn't always what's in your head. So I want to just say that sometimes this stuff comes in from past lives, right? So mm -hmm. I had the past life guy, the guides from my past life that were making me safe. And then I have, I, I have a client that I was working with who he had a past life where his, um, his business had been noticed by the king. And the king brought him in to favor and suddenly his business took off and everything was wonderful and, and he was doing phenomenally. And then one day the king just as capriciously threw him out and he was ruined. He was, he lived in poverty for the rest of his life and he died penniless. And this lifetime of his was coming into his current business Every time his business would get good, he would slow down and pull back because 
he was like, oh, it's too much like the king. And if he was, this was not a conscious choice, right? This was not something he was even aware of as a past life. It was literally part of the conversation that we had as I was ch- coaching him through this process. I'm like, okay, there's something past life here. And I had to go back into the past life, and find this for him to understand what was going on. And so, you know, this was a, a big issue for him. And it, it, it was something that wasn't even conscious. So things can exist in our energy field. They can exist in our past life. They can exist in our ancestral line. So if you have a, an ancestral story that comes down through your family line that you, your ancestor back, you know, either your parents, your grandparents, somebody further back had a cycle of, you know, feast or famine, right? They would get all their money and then they'd lose all their money and they'd get all their money and they'd lose all their money. That sort of thing can come down through a family line. And, you know, there's a process that you have to do in order to pass it back up and be like, oh, yeah, I don't want to live in this cycle of feast and famine, right? So there are are other factors that can go into this that are uh, related to you and your energy and your soul's journey and your soul contract. Sometimes it's a soul contract, too. Uh, where all of these things can can be impacted. Occasionally, I'll even see a curse on a family where somebody generations back cursed the family and it's still running, or somebody recently cursed the family and it's still running, right? Uh, or cursed some person. It's it, you know, curses are less less common than people think they are. So don't panic about a curse, but they do exist, and I, I have run across them. So. There, there are so many different energetics that play into this process, as well as the mental, emotional process for yourself. And there's also a receiving piece that I want to talk about, which is if you are terrible at receiving, that's going to play into your business because you're going to have a hard time receiving money. And if you have conflated money and love, if you were grew up in a family where gift giving or money giving was the way that that your family expressed love and you are limiting your ability to receive love in this moment then you're going to have a hard time getting money in the door in your business too you know there's lots of ways in which your business is impacted by your energy your beliefs your assumptions things like that there's uh, I I know that when I was burning out on a regular basis, I would discover that all of my discovery calls were getting canceled or people weren't showing up. And it was because I was too damn tired to take that phone call. <laughs> I was just like, I can't do it. Right. So that's another way in which it gets impacted. So, you know, this is it, it's huge. It, it, it's not a small subject. This is a massive subject and it's something that we're going to come back to over and over again as part of this conversation that we're having on on wednesdays here on spirit guides so um anything i say spark something for you Catherine? yeah you know i think um what's coming up for me kelly is this noticing where or i guess being curious about maybe where people might have a tendency to want to put the point of power without of them or or outside of them right so instead of looking at okay well how am i showing up what am i believing what am i you know doing or not doing to to just be mindful of of just automatically going to oh well it must be a past life or oh it must be a curse or oh it must be a right so yes that's 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 definitely like in the energetic thing but but noticing if there is a pattern where you're wanting to give your power to something outside of you right and yeah. to not be kind of autonomous and and sovereign in determining what it is that's going on for you if that makes sense yeah, and, and that's generally true overall. If if you are seeking your power or your solution outside of yourself, you're probably looking in the wrong place. Almost certainly. Pretty much mm-hmm. every time. The, the only exception to that would be as if you're trying to acquire knowledge that will help you to understand the pieces inside of yourself that that you mm-hmm. can go outside for mm-hmm. um, and you know to understand your business and things like that if you're if you're seeking understanding then that is usually outside of yourself for for knowledge based acquiring of things pretty much everything else all internal it's all an yeah. internal job. 
job. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that's internal, whether it is a fast life thing or whether it is a here's what I'm doing. And I agree with you, Catherine. The very first thing you need to look at is what am I doing? What am I believing? What am I thinking? Because Mm -hmm. I always start with those things because Mm -hmm. those are 90 percent of the time, 95 percent of the time. Those are the issues. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. you know, so we especially when you're new into the spiritual world, People tend to look for the magical solution before they look for the practical mm-hmm. solution. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, I'm going to encourage you to really reverse that because the, the practical solution is usually the easiest solution and the mm-hmm. fastest solution, whereas the, mm-hmm. the magical solution is, you know, it, it is less often required. And mm-hmm. so this there's a balancing act to be had with this. And this goes back to the difference between a mystic and a shaman. And I, I wish I knew who said this. That I got this from a friend who went to a, a conference with this guy who was up on stage. And he said, yeah, I studied with the, the uh, shamans in Tibet and or the mystics in Tibet and the shamans in Peru. And he said, the, you want to know the difference between a mystic and a shaman? A mystic goes up into the ethers and has an amazing mystical experience and spends it just the rest of their lives trying to get there and stay there. And a shaman goes up into the ethers, has an amazing mystical experience, comes home and has lunch. And mm. so we have lunch. We are all about staying grounded in this mm-hmm. reality. What is the point of being here if you are not grounded in this reality, if you are not grounded in your body, if you are not engaging in the physical world? There's That's the whole point of being on the planet. And so we really, the very first thing that I'm always going to point you to is what's happening in physical reality before we go into the energetics of it. Mm -hmm. And that's because Mm -hmm. most of the time that's the issue. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would you, would you say that it it fits for you then for people to be curious, right? So noticing like, am I getting in the physical reality? Am I getting the results that I would love in my life? And if I'm not, then having kind of a curious uh, inquiry into, well, how am I showing up? What am I, you know, what might I be believing? Where am I taking action or not? Am I getting stuck in perfectionism? Am I letting fear hold me back? Am I making an agreement with an idea that there's not enough to go around? And so starting to really get curious about ourselves and how we're showing up. And then as we start to not maybe not dissect it, but just get more clear on that and be more conscious and intentional about how we are showing up for ourselves in our life. And then if things still aren't shifting, then starting to get curious about, hmm, well, what might what else might be going on here? Yeah. Well, and and the curiosity is important. I I look for pattern finding. That's what I'm looking for is what are the patterns that I'm seeing? And oftentimes those patterns will reflect across your life in general. So for instance, maybe your dog growled at you, your boss yelled at you, your, the, the cashier, the cashier at the, at the uh, supermarket barely acknowledged you and was having a bad day. You know, these are all the experiences of the same thing, right? You know, somebody haunted you in traffic. It's all you feeling aggression coming towards you. And so that's a pattern that you could find across multiple experiences that you can be like, okay, so what's going on with that? Am I, Um, uh, you know, do I have a thing where I feel like I don't get to take up space? Is that why the dog growled at me because I took up space with him and why the, the boss yelled at me, you know, maybe I was, uh, you know, I, I put a personal item on my desk, you know, and that that wasn't allowed or something, you know, there's lots of reasons why these sorts of things come up and they're, they're, you know, you look for the foundation underneath those experiences and you look to see how they relate. Because a lot of times that I, I, a lot of my clients that I work with, they have a hard time identifying the pieces of these things for the patterns, right? Mm. This, they, you know, I'll just listen to their story about what happened for their day. And I, I hear like six different things that are all the same thing. And to them, they don't, they don't see that yet. And so uh, this is actually a, a practice that you have to come into of understanding the metaphor of your life because spirit and our soul and the entirety of reality operates on metaphor and symbolism and if you don't speak the language of metaphor and symbolism then you're going to have a hard time interpreting these things and finding some of the patterns 
you know, not to say that you can't entirely do it, but it will mm-hmm. be harder to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so this is one of the reasons why I really encourage people to learn how to think and operate in metaphor and symbolism, because that is the language of spirit. And it gives you so much information just in your day-to-day life that just shows up because you're paying attention to the symbology of everything that's going on around you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's, that's a process to develop that vocabulary but it's a very valuable one. And it's a language that you learn to speak with your guides. And so, you know, part of the process of learning to talk to your guides and be effective in that communication is really getting them to help you establish a vocabulary of how, you know, when you show me a door, what does it mean? When you show me a window, what does it mean? When you show me uh, a, a cheetah, what does it mean, right? So, you know, that sort of thing. And the more you practice, the more you develop the vocabulary, the more you develop the vocabulary, the more understanding you have. And then those things not only show up when you're talking to your guides, but they show up in the physical world. And Mm -hmm. you go, oh, look at that. Oh, Mm -hmm. look at that. You know, anytime I'm in a massive transformation process, I find that people tailgate me on the road. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Which is weird, but that's what happens. So things like that happen. And so, you know, that's part of the process of of learning how to do this work is learning how to speak that language so that you can find the patterns that you can use to unwind the belief structures and the assumptions and the thought patterns that are creating this reality that is the thing that you don't want. Mm -hmm. And then the other side of that, which we'll talk about a little bit more on, on when we do work around identity, well, we are talking about it on some of the other episodes. Um, is uh, to create a new thought pattern and a new belief structure around the identity that you're making uh, strides towards stepping into. Mm -hmm. And so that you become the person and therefore create the reality that that person has. And Mm -hmm. so that's another side to it as well. So you have the, the, I'm going to unwind the things I don't want. And then you have, I'm going to construct the things that I do want in my identity, not in my outside reality. Although you do take te- steps towards that as well, but they, they happen of their own accord when you construct the identity first. And so it's less work in the physical world if you shift the identity first. Mm-hmm. And so that that's a whole lot that we just yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that conversation because I think we have, like you do, your work is really in terms of like the energetics of it. And my language is more about frequency. And so I think they're very complementary, but we have slightly different perspectives on it. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that conversation. That's going to be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is why I invited you to share this, this Mm -hmm. day of the podcast with me, Mm -hmm. because I knew that, that we would have such an interesting conversation ongoing on this, uh, on this podcast. So thank you guys for coming and being here. I'm so glad you could be part of this. Don't forget to rate and subscribe. And remember, there's the contest happening. And you'll hear that in one of the announcements here, if you haven't already. And we will see you next time. Have a great one. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Show of the sun.